Uh, good morning, everyone. TGIF. Yep, it's Friday again. And a beautiful day out here again. Birds are singing, grass is growing. Yeah, just beautiful. Put some sunscreen on if you're outside hanging out in the sun. And uh, drink lots of water. It's not overly hot, but it's just beautiful. T-shirt weather. Uh, I do have a sweater on because it's a little cold in the basement here right now. Um, didn't have, didn't run my heaters last night. No use running them now. Just a waste of electricity. Got to save the world with electricity. So um, yeah, it's TJF. I'm gonna, uh, I'm stripping down three three nineties right now. It's a three ninety day. So this is a one a customer has uh, supplied. It's, um, I think it's barely been used by the looks of it. There's a little bit of specks of sawdust on it. So let's get down and uh, tear it apart and I'll talk about 390s a bit. They've been uh, a great saw. You know, first of all, the 390s, as we all know, or maybe you don't know, were a 385 first, uh, which was, you know, 83 or 84 cc's i think they were actually not 80, 85 i could be wrong i can't remember it's been so long now so uh these are uh, actually you know they call them a 390 but they're 88 cc's husqvarna has been pretty close with their last two two numbers of their saw models of um the cc's here with, with stills good luck figuring that out but anyways they, they make a good product as well you know me i'm not uh, you know, I am a big Husky fan, but I like all saws uh, when they're built right and good models. As you can see, just a little bit of fine dust on it, so the guy has used it just a tad here. Get rid of all our big parts here, and we'll get right into getting the cylinder off and getting it ready for porting. Like I say, it's 390 day. I just tore two other ones apart. Now this is the third one. The other two were brand new. One's going to a, a customer in the Netherlands, I believe, and the other um, to a falling um, guy on the coast here. I like to remove the handlebars. It just makes it easier to get the cylinder off and everything so you can uh, get at the, the fourth bolt that's in the way with the handlebar. The one here with the rubber bushings on top here, right? So we'll just get rid of the handlebars. It only takes a second. They're all self-tapping type screws in the Husqvarna plastic tank so just watch you don't spin them in hard with an impact. Run them in and tighten them by hand so you don't strip the plastic. You can put inserts in them later but most of the time they last fine. Okay handlebars are off. Let's get our carburetor undone. I always put each saw in a separate parts box. All the nuts and bolts and the um, Clips and washers. Get a little blow. It's not all that dirty. So I don't need to take the carburetor completely off. I just undo the screws and just let it hang out here while I get the cylinder off and do the rest of it. So just take the screws out enough so you can lift the cylinder off with the intake boot on it. Get our spark plug out. side mount which is the anti-vibe mount that goes to the handlebar get our decomp out which is on the side on most huskies not like on the top like most stills or some other models of husky a little grommet off the top off here and let's break loose our uh, muffler bolts i do them by hand because you can strip your uh allen bolts allen bolts are terrible for stripping Torx bolts, I believe, are the best, man. You, you know, hardly ever strip a, a Torx screw, eh, on a still or on the new Huskies. A lot of them are coming with the Torx screws now. Just like that top cover a second ago. You needed a T27 driver to take it off. Weird that they just made this model with just three, three Torx screws on top of the um, top cover, and that's it. Rest are, rest are all still Allen, but it seems like most all smaller Huskies now. 500 series are all going to the torque screw so you need a t27 driver and what's the other one that works t20 and t27 is your is your two most used tools on them now okay muffler's off i also loosen the cylinder bolts by hand 
then I then I pull them out with the impact. Okay. If it was real used and there was a lot of stuff in the bolt holes, I would clean the bolt holes out and smack the Allen wrench in there a little bit so it doesn't strip it. If you strip a cylinder bolt, they're ter terrible to get out. If you ever done one, you know what I mean. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, get those off. Oh, he sticks to the magnet. Okay, just watch you don't break your gasket when you take it apart. I kind of just go down with my little pusher thing here and make sure it's not grabbing the cylinder. No, it isn't. Kapunk. There we go. There's the cylinder off. Our cylinder bolts go into the parts box. We take our rubber boot off. Intake boot. Which once in a while, you know, if you ever get a saw that's racing that's a bit older of a Husqvarna or any other type of saw, sometimes these rubber, rubber boots get ripped, eh? They actually make a, a, a summer and a winter one in on Huskies. Because uh, some, some of the Huskies in the winter working in the real cold conditions, they would crack that pipe and uh, suck air. Okay, yeah, it's barely been ran. There's a little bit of oil in here. Looks like uh, red oil, probably red armor. It looks like it's probably been ran with. Uh, Echo's red armor. It's good oil. Uh, there's a lot of controversy on, on the internet. What's the best oil? What's the best gas? Well, any good brand name oil is good. Um, Aspen, uh, you know, still oil, husky oil, echo oil, red armor oil, you name it, man. Am's oil. There's all sorts, man, but they're all good as long as the saw is built right and you know how to tune the carburetor right. If it has a tunable carburetor, if it doesn't, like the Temtronic of Auto Tune, there's, you know, it self adjusts for itself for different types of fuels and whatnot, but you should still try to use. Um, you know, good stuff, good high octane with no ethanol and good mix oil. You know, at least 89 or above in, in, in saws, you know. So there you go. There's uh, this fella, Mark Kick Kickert. Kickert. I don't know where he's from, but uh, I'll mark his on top here so I don't get him messed up with the two new ones. So obviously I know this one's used. So yeah, now I'm going to um, put this in my pile over here. Right to there, right behind my porting bench here, and so I got the three three nineties here ready to go, an X Torque one ready to go, a couple uh, Echo seventy three tens I'm gonna do as well, and then a few other ones. I got a five seventy two here, a four sixty two, a, uh, a three sixty two still, yeah. So lots on the go. It's Friday. I'm just going to get, um, I'm going to do three or four here today and go from there. So maybe I'll show you me porting uh, one of these 390s, do a quick little uh, a video on that, then I'll show you the reassembly of it. Um, go from there. See if I have time to do that today. If not, you all have a good weekend out there. Get out fishing, cutting wood. It's a good weekend for that before fire season comes around. You can still run saws out there right now on the small golf islands and around your properties around the island here right now before it uh, the heat waves come again and we get shut down and won't be able to run a saw so get out there do whatever have some fun be healthy have a great friday we'll catch you later today or on the weekend keep your saw into it stick and ash ribbon road enjoy the sun bye now